Thank you for stopping by and listening in on my talk today. I'd like to thank the AVSA for this opportunity to showcase the work I've been doing for the last year and a half involving experimenting with my African violets and growing them under different lighting conditions. My discussion is entitled Spectral Enlightenment, One Light Does Not Fit All, where I will focus on how red to blue light ratios from artificial lights impact plant development and flowering. The first topic up for discussion is light, basic lighting um, parameters such as lumen or lux compared to the K values you see when you purchase different light bulbs. The other lighting parameters I will also briefly mention are CCT and CRI values. I've graded them out because they are not completely important for this talk, but I'll mention them anyway because you may see them. And then we'll get into the actual experiments and data. I will talk about what happens when you grow African violets with natural light and look at the differences when you grow them in high red versus um, no blue. And then we'll go into the topic that a lot, of you are, a lot of you are interested in, which is artificial lighting. And we'll look at the physiological differences in these African violet plants among different red to blue ratios. We'll also discuss what is the best quality of light. Can AVs be grown with one single color temperature? Can AVs be grown with LED lights? And also, is full spectrum lights necessary? So the first topic up for discussion is basic lighting parameters. These parameters include lumens lux, K values, CCT, and CRI. I apologize, these are extremely acronym heavy and they can be a little intimidating, but I'll try to break it down and make sure you understand the most important aspects of the basic lighting uh, parameters are lumens lux and the K values from your, for your light bulbs. So one lux is equivalent to one lumen per meter square. Lux is simply a measurement of light, just like inches is a measurement of distance. And to give you some perspective, um, direct sunlight, uh, when you walk outside your house, depending on where you live in the country, it could be anywhere between 30, 2,000 to 100,000 lux, whereas ambient daylight uh, will range from 10,000 to 25,000 lux. And then for at night, when there's no moon, you'll get almost zero lux values. Um, these are the typical ranges. Uh, you'll see the Optima website uh, for, for their plants recommend about 10,000 lux um, to grow African violets in their greenhouse. Correlated color temperature, or CCT, is related to the advertised K values you see when you purchase your light bulbs. Now, generally, I say they're closely related because unless you have a spectrometer, you will never know the true CCT value, so you can only go by the advertised K value that's on the box. Generally, the lower the value, such as 3000K, the more yellowish or warm the light is, whereas the higher the number, such as 6400K, the more blue the light is light is. So to be, give you a, a visual, daylight has approximately 4600 to 6500 K values. So if you buy a light bulb that is in this range, this is considered daylight. Whereas if you buy a bulb between 3100 to 4500 K, this is considered cool white. And then if you buy an even lower uh, K value, such as 2000 to 3000 K, this is considered warm white, and the light here is generally more yellowish in color. The last lighting parameter I will discuss is color rendering index, or CRI. This is simply the measurement of a light source's ability to reveal the object's true colors. And the scale is typically from a zero to 100. When you take your plant outside into daylight and you take a photo, you notice that the image quality is excellent and the colors are also true. And that's because daylight um, has a CRI value of 100. Whereas if you were to take the same photo, but inside with artificial lighting, you notice that the colors will often appear a little bit off. And so CRI values of, um, uh, of fluorescent lighting, for example, can oftentimes be a little bit lower, between 50 to 70. And then if you were to take the plant and place it under a red, blue, or purple light, um, you'll notice that the CRI, CRI values will be zero because the colors are completely off. So that is it for the lighting parameter discussion. Um, hopefully that wasn't too torturous. 
We will discuss next um, the physiological differences of the plants when it's grown under natural lighting. We want to see the differences when the plants are grown under red versus blue light, and can African violets be grown with natural light? About 100 years ago, a botanist came up with a clever idea to look at how plants respond when certain parts of the spectrum was eliminated. For example, he created five different greenhouses. In greenhouse number five, he eliminated the blue light from the light spectrum. And then these plants were only grown between the green light to the red light spectrum. What he noticed was that these plants became very idolated or they appeared to look like they were being grown in the dark. The petioles were very long, the leaves were thin and small, um, the, the plants that were variegated also lost variegation, there was a delay in maturation, and the plants failed to flower and develop seed pods. Basically, the plants were reaching for blue light, and so that's how they became very tall. Now, when you add the blue light back in, in greenhouse number three, you notice that the plants flowered in five days versus 14 days, the thickness of the stems was about three times more than that of the thickness in the greenhouse number five. And also the plant was heavier than that grown without blue light. That experiment done 100 years ago was the inspiration for the rest of this talk. For me to accurately qualify and quantify the amount of light uh, that was being received by the plant, I had to use an instrument um, called the spectrometer. This instrument I purchased is the Lightning Navigator. It is actually very user friendly. Um, you can download the app on your phone and you can run the diagnostics and then have it directly transferred to your phone. The only drawback is this uh, little pocket size machine costs $750. This is on the lower end of spectrometers. You have nicer ones that, that are used by professionals that can range up to about $3,000. The diagnostics with the spectrometer was run on two different windows. One was a west window and also the east window. It was ran on, uh, in a, on a day in November that was slightly overcast, overcast and cloudy at three different time points, 9 a.m., 12 p.m., or noon, and also at 3 p.m. What you'll notice first by looking at the spectra is that natural light or the sun emits all of these different light spectra at, at a constant rate. You know, there, there, there are some differences here in, at 9 a.m. with the white spaces when the lights in the red and green range are not emitted as much. But then for most throughout the day, almost 100% of the lights are emitted constantly with, uh, with sunlight. And also notice uh, the changes in lux values throughout the day. You'll start off around 1700 lux um, of light at 9 a.m., transition to about 3900, which is a high value during noon and then go back to a very low value uh, later in the day. You also notice in the east window, you'll see the same uh, transition to a lower value of lux, but you don't see the peak of uh, high lux values around noon. The far left range here of light is UV light. We will not talk about it much, but this UV light is emitted in a high number or high value compared to other light systems that we use when we talk about artificial lighting. We'll also see that infrared, far red lights in the, this uh, far right in this range here is not emitted as much with our artificial lighting systems. Can you grow African violets with natural light? And the answer is definitely yes. Our parents have been growing plants with natural light for decades. The pro is the sun produces all the lights throughout the entire spectrum that the plant needs. The con or the drawback here is that natural light is good for some of you who live in parts of the country that gets constant um, light, such as Los Angeles or the Caribbean. But those of you who live in, let's say, Seattle, where it's constantly cloudy or rainy, natural light may not be the best option for you. Here is Tong Wen's white tiger, which I've been growing this winter. And as you can see, there's a lot of spaces or gaps in between the leaves. And so this may not be a show plant, but the plant is still happy, it still flowers, and it's still growing. To put this into a visual perspective, natural light will give, provide the best quality of light, but also the lower uh, on the lower end when it comes to consistency, depending on where you live. Now, where do fluorescent and LED lights fit in into this diagram? This leads us to the next topic, which is to look at plants and how they're grown under artificial lights. 
And we want to look at the physiological differences among the different red to blue ratios of lights when we purchase our artificial light systems, um, either fluorescence or LED lights. To maintain consistency with my spectrometer in use, I will place the spectrometer against the crown of my plant. In this case, I use 6.5 inches below the light because my biggest plant uh, is located about 6.5 inches from the light. And so this measurement, 6.5 inches, will be used for all of my spectrometer measurements uh, in all my studies. Many use the T8 light system. And so what I did was I purchased this lighting ballast and I purchased uh, two different lights. One is a 4100K fluorescent light bulb that's 32 watts. The other one is an LED 5000K 14 watt light bulb. The first thing you'll notice with fluorescent light versus natural light is that fluorescent lights have a lot of empty white spaces, basically light that's not emitted by the fluorescent light compared to natural light. You also see discrete peaks of light in the fluorescent lighting system. You'll have unique peaks of uh, UV light, strong peaks of blue, green, and red light. The blue and red light is important for plants because that is the light that the plant sees for photosynthesis. The green light is maxed out at 100%. You always have at least one peak in the spectral uh, analysis that is maxed out at 100%, and this is green light. And green light is important for our eyes so that we can actually see what we're working with. Now, when you double up, you have two bulbs now. Um, the spectral analysis is actually the same. The, the peaks are about the same. The only difference is the lux values here have more than doubled. Um, there's some synergistic effect when you add on a second bulb. Um, but also, you will buy the bulb at 4100K, but the spectral, uh, spectrometer sees it as 3900K, which is slightly more red than what the box is advertised at. When we look at the LED light bulbs, we see that there is slight difference in the spectral uh, spectrogram. For example, here you have the blue light, which maxes out at 100%, and then a very long range peak from green to red um, uh, with, uh, for LED light bulbs. Here, the LED light bulb is 5000K. It's, that's what it's advertised at. The CCT value that that spectrometer sees is 4700K, so slightly more red than what we're advertised at. The lux value here is 4400 lux, which is higher than what is um, shown for the fluorescent light bulbs. So generally, LED light bulbs do give out more lux than fluorescent lights. That's not always the case, but that's the general idea. When we trace the levels or the peaks of the fluorescent lights, when we compare that to LEDs, what we see is that LED lights do not give off UV light. Generally, in this case, you have a higher range or a higher emission of blue light, and you don't have the strong green light emitted uh, with fluorescent lights, and you don't have as much red light emitted in this case. But you still have a lot of red and orange that's, um, that's shown and a lot of green that's emitted by this LED light bulb. Now, I, I don't generally grow with T8 bulbs. Most of my plants are grown with T5 high output bulbs. And so I would um, hopefully convince you that, yes, you can grow with T5 HL lights. These are some of my AVs I've grown in the last couple of years um, with T5 HL lights. And they have been entered in some shows as well. So. This, there's some skepticism, but yes, you can grow with high output T5 HL lights. The only difference is I grow them at a very low day length. So I only have my lights on for about 6.5 hours a day. This is my T5 light setup. I, all my T5 lights are from Sunblaster. They're the Nanotech T5 reflectors that come with it. They also come with the 6400K light bulbs that's fluorescent. I also purchased additional uh, T5 HL3000K lights that are 54 watts, as well as an LED 5000K light bulb that's about 30 watts. I've used this uh, light system for the rest of my studies. One of the first things you'll notice in the T5 HL light setups is that it has a very similar spectral analysis compared to that of the T8 lights you'll see the characteristic small UV light peak in the beginning, a blue, green, and red light peak. Now, these are three different lights. You have 3000K, 4000K, and 6400K lights that are of various ages. 
So thousand k has the most red light, so therefore the red light is at 100%, whereas 4000k has, has less red light, and then 6400k has even less red light. The lux values are fairly consistent, except 6400k, you notice it has a very low lux value, and that's because it is a three-year-old bulb. When you look at the ratio of red to blue light, you'll notice 3000k has approximately 3 to 1, 4000k has 2 to 1 red to blue, and then this three-year-old 6400k light bulb has 1.25 red to blue uh, blue light. Now when we compare this to a new 6400k light, you'll notice the ratio is slightly different. A new 6400k light bulb outputs a lot more lux, first of all. It, it emits 7300 lux compared to the 3800 lux that a 3-year-old bulb gives off. It also emits a lower amount of red to blue compared to that of the 6400K. So the new bulb emits 1 to 1 red to blue, whereas the 3-year-old 6400K light bulb emits 1.25 to 1 blue. And so this would suggest that as the bulb ages, the blue light probably diminishes in strength, and so the red light will appear that it has uh, a lot more uh, luminosity than the blue light. When, when we compare the traces of these three different lights, we see that the blue light doesn't change as much, the, uh, the, the green light doesn't change at all, but you'll also notice that the only thing that really changes is the amount of red light that's being emitted. So the 6400K light bulb in blue, the blue dotted lines here, is the lowest. The green light is the 4000K light, and then the red light, uh, red line is the 3000K lights. Um, and so the red light is the only thing that's really changing in these light systems. When we, when we compare the 4000K fluorescent lights to the 4000K LED lights, similarly, similarly to the uh, fluorescent uh, versus LED in the T8 systems, we notice that there is no UV light emitted in the LED lights. We see a very strong blue light peak. And instead of having two sharp peaks for green and red light, as in the fluorescent lights, the LED lights have a single broad peak from green to red. Now, generally, LED lights do emit more lux or light than fluorescent lights. For In, in this example, the 4000K LED lights emit 6400 lux versus a 4300 lux um, for the fluorescent light. Now, LEDs don't always emit uh, more light than fluorescence, if you compare this 4000K LED to the new 6400K fluorescent lights, you'll notice that the new 6400K lights emit 7300 lux of light versus the LED, which emits only 6400 uh, lux of light. So the conclusions from, from this analysis is that fluorescent bulbs do become warmer and lose lux over time. LED retrofit K values may not always be accurate because in some cases, you may be buying 3000K or 4000K, but in actuality, it may be slightly cooler or more blue. In this case, the 3000K light is actually 3200K and the 4000K light is actually 4100K light. In my previous diagram, I outlined how natural light or natural sunlight has excellent light quality, but the only drawback to sunlight is depending on where you live, the consistency of the light can be very poor. And therefore, natural light is located here uh, on the top in green uh, in the diagram. But with fluorescent lights, as you've seen, Fluorescent light has decent quality, I would call it decent good quality, and also better consistency than natural light. And the reason is because fluorescent light is artificial and it doesn't have to be diminished in the presence of a cloud or a cold winter day. Fluorescent lights are still reliable and you can still grow very nice show quality plants with fluorescent lights. Now, we've also mentioned LED lights, and I've only talked about LED retrofit lights, which actually make an excellent quality replacement for, for the fluorescent lights. But before I d discuss more LED lights, I'm going to show you the data um, on the plants, because I know you want to see the, the plant experiments I've done in the last year and a half. The first question I will address is, can African violets be grown with a single color temperature light? Many of us have grown African violets, particularly variegated ones, that we will no start to notice the leaves will start to bleach or become yellow um, as the plants continue to grow under these, uh, under these artificial lights that we have. 
So in this case, I'm using three different examples of variegated African violets. I've drawn a red circle to the new growth versus the old growth, growth, which is located outside the circle. Now these three plants were grown under 6400K lights for months. And then I decided, well, one day these, these plants are gonna die because I've lost many before to the bleaching of the leaves. And I decided, well, let's just throw them under 3000K lights, which is high red and see what happens. Literature, uh, the scientific literature suggests that high amounts of red light actually promotes chlorophyll production. So after two months, uh, of what I call red light therapy, um, these plants were placed under 3000K lights. I started to see new growth come in and the new growth located inside the red circle, these new growth was actually very dark green compared to the outside, outside of the circle, which is bleach, um, bleach leaves. Now then I decided, well, let's grow these plants further. So I left them there for two additional months. And then I noticed on the 3000K lights, which is high in red, these African violets stopped growing completely. And because the plants are wicked, uh, the roots started to rot as well. So this phenomenon of chlorosis or bleaching of the leaves is very common in variegated African violets. And also I'm seeing in a lot of light green color colored leaved uh, African violets as well. Another phenomenon of growing with very high blue light bulbs, uh, such as 6400K, is that certain plants will endure what I call red light reach. Now, you, you've, I've shown you in the beginning the uh, example from the botanist where he showed that when you remove blue light, the plants start reaching really, uh, to, so it starts growing very tall, reaching for blue light. I consider that blue light reach. But in this case, there are African violets that have what I call red light reach. And the reason is because your the plant is constantly flowering. So this is a Russian African violet. Uh, it's called uh, black swan. And although it's receiving a lot of light under the 6400K light bulbs, it was constantly reaching. And so I looked on, on the Facebook forums or Facebook groups, and I noticed that a lot of people would call it saying that it was reaching because it was too much light and it was trying to protect the crown. But I was not able to find any scientific literature that could support that. Instead, what I believe what was happening was that perhaps it is not reaching for blue light, but it's actually reaching for red light. So what I did was I took this uh, plant, which was reaching constantly, and placed it under 3000K lights for two months. And what I noticed is that now the the leaves completely flattened out, and as you can see, the etiolation was quite severe. The petioles are very long because it was actually reaching for the red light, and then finally when I gave it red light, it finally flattened out, and you can kind of see how long the petioles were. So in this case, the AV, or African violet, is not reaching to protect the crown. It's actually reaching to get more red light. So this uh, phenomenon is actually very common I've seen in very dark green foliage plants and plants that are constantly are wanting to flower a lot more often such as the Russians. So if the Russian African violet is prone to flower more often it needs a lot more red light than we are able to keep or able to give it unless we go down to about 3000-4000k. However, I was able to find a very few number of African violets that defied this one bulb rule. So for example, several plants I've grown including Cajun's Royal Jewels, Cajun's Royal Knockout, Midnight Waterfall, these plants actually flourished and thrived only under 6400K lights. And the reason why they were able to thrive, I believe, is because they are dark green leaved plants and under the 6400K lights, they have the potential to become giants. I mean, we're talking, I mean, this plant I'm having, I'm holding in my hand, uh, this is Cajun's Royal Jewels. This is about 22 and a half inches wide and it was growing bigger until I added a bloom bo booster that killed its crown. But as you can see, the leaf span here, the width is about six and a half inches. So the giant dark green foliage plants there are exceptions of them, um, that a few of them that actually love growing in only only 6400K lights. Though I was able to find a few plants that grew very well under 6400K lights or high blue lights, I was not able to find any plant that grew well under 3000K red lights or 3000K high red lights. So do not attempt this. Um, the plants grew very poorly or not at all. 
and the plants just look very iterated. The petioles are very long, and then the symmetry is just completely off. So do not attempt to grow African violets long term under 3000K lights. However, 3000K does have a function, and you should include it um, in your uh, in your repertoire of, of 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 lights because I did come across a few plants, such as this one. This is trail along, which I've had for almost two years. And it would flower maybe once, and it would put out maybe one or two blossoms uh, every six months or so, and that was about it. And I got so frustrated that I almost threw it threw it away. And so one day I decided, well, you know what? I'm gonna throw this plant under uh, the 3000 K light um, to see if anything happens. And what I noticed is now, well, it started actually to flower. So I was actually quite amazed. So plants that do not flower and they are quite mature. So the, the key is the plant has to be mature, of mature size. If it's mature size and it's not flowering, 3000K will be a great um, a, uh, addition. Um, or you can just move the plant directly to a 3000K for a short time and watch it flower because the red light does induce flowering for some of these African violets that refuse to flower. So to summarize some of my findings, I was able to find some African violets um, that actually grow very well in 6400K lights, including Cajun's Well Knockout, Super Duper, and also an exception is a variegated uh, plant called Nessus Orange Pico. And that plant actually did very well, I was quite surprised, in the 6400K lights uh, long term, unlike the other ones. So 6400K is the recommended value for these particular plants I found, but I also saw that in some cases when the plant started to reach, I saw that as red light reach and I immediately put it in red light therapy, which is 3000K for a very short term. Um, I did this for about a week and then I moved it back to the 6400K stand and I noticed that the leaves did flatten out. In some cases, it didn't flat out, flatten out as much as I want and so I put it in for 3000K for another week and then put it back the 6400K for the rest of the time, and then it would flatten out before show. And then the majority of, of African violets I'm seeing is particularly those that are variegated and those that love to flower a lot, uh, including Edge of Darkness, Frozen in Time, and Fantasy Finale. Um, the best way to grow these plants is to have a diversified uh, light setup. And so, for example, when I say diversified, diversified light setup is to have one bulb that's 6400K and one bulb that's 3000K. Or you can have one bulb that's 6400K and maybe one bulb that's 4000K, or one that's 5000K versus one that's 4000K. So the, having a diverse, diversified bulb setup allows you to anticipate when the plant wants more red, it will get them pulled more red light from the bulb that is warmer. Alternatively, if you know your plants well enough, you can alternate. So you can alternate between a high blue 6400K or 5000K light bulb and then if you start to see some reaching or starting to see some minor bleaching, immediately switch to a 4,000, 3,000 K light bulb to anticipate blooms. So this is more for advanced. I would suggest the easiest way is to have a diversified bulb setup. But if you know your plants well enough, an alternative or alternating system between cool and warm is probably another option as well. What I did in this next experiment was I took two Bob Bularoo crowns and I grew them up um, so that they're similar size for about six months in the same lighting system. And then at the end of the six months, I decided to separate them. One would go to 3000K LED lights and one would go to 6400K fluorescent lights. And now after eight weeks, I took a photo together with both of them. And what you see is that in the 3000K high red light LED lights, the plant is a lot smaller. Um, the leaves are also smaller and there's also a lot more gaps in between the leaves. But the number of blooms is actually almost twice as much compared to that of a 6400K light plant. Now when we look at the plant on the right, the leaves are bigger, um, the shape is actually a little better, um, the, there's also a lot of thickness to the leaves and the petioles, but the blooms are significantly less compared to the one with the 3000K lights. So after this, what I did was I decided, well now let's add a 3000K or warm light to the 6400K light setup. And I grew the plant out for about additional 10 uh, weeks. And what I see is now after 10 weeks, the plant on the left, the blooms have faded. The plant is now entered a growth phase, but because there is insufficient blue light in the 3000K light setup, the plant is not growing. 
Um, and whereas the plant on the right, with the additional 3000K light bulb, it is now pushing up plenty of bloom stalks. It is flowering its head off. Um, and because 6400K is still in um, the light setup, the plant is still growing bigger than it did previously. I've also noticed that if you compare the lux value uh, in the 6400K uh, light in February, it's about 3800 lux. But when you add the 3000K light bulb, the lux value has increased to 5200 uh, lux. And so typically when you increase uh, about let's say 1400 lux, you would expect, hey, that's a lot of light. I mean, the plant should be extremely tight um, but I'm not seeing that in this case when I add the 3000K uh, light bulb. And I suspect one possibility is because the lux value itself may play a small role in African violets having tight centers. But I think another role that we haven't really looked at is the amount of blue to red light may be impacting how light, how African violets have, have tight centers. So those of us who see very tight centers of plants, it could be because well, you have too much blue and not enough red. This I'll be uh, investigating in the near future. Now the last topic that we'll be discussing today will involve LED lights. And the question is, can AVs be grown with LED lights and is full spectrum lights necessary? We have talked about LED retrofits as a great alternative to uh, full fluorescent lights um, earlier. But this is a different type of LED light system. This is the blue-red light system that often appears pink. And so when you look at these lights with a spectrometer, you'll notice that it no longer has a green peak. It has only a blue peak and a red peak. And therefore, the light looks really pink, or some people will say blurplish or purplish. Um, but this light I purchased on, uh, on, uh, online for about $250. And I did measurements uh, at different uh, at different parts um, in this in this plant setup, and so towards the top, you'll notice that you're getting about 30,000 lux of light, and then the African violet here towards the very bottom left, it's getting about 5,600 lux, um, and then all around the lux value changes. Um, the blue light remains constant 100% because this is during the growth phase. So this pink light or purple light. Uh, gives off um, either two modes of light. It has growth phase, which is high blue, or bloom phase, which is high red. So I have this under the growth phase. And so you'll notice that sometimes the red lights will dip to about, you know, maybe 0.5 to 1 blue. And sometimes it's about towards the top here, you'll see about 0.7 to 1 blue. So it ranges, but predominantly in growth phase, it's less than, the ratio is less than 1 to 1. Using a similar experimental approach as I did for Rob's Boularoo, what I did was I grew two Nessus cranberry lace plants um, to about the same size before I separated them into two different light setups. One was a blue-red light that was shown previously and one was 5000K LED lights. Uh, I tried to grow the, the plant on the left with the same value of lux as I did for the plant on the right, but unfortunately, blue-red light plants um, can didn't, responded by having very tight crowns or very tight centers. And so the plant, I had to move around to find the right spot, and that was about 800 lux. And uh, you'll notice the plant on the left actually grew a little bit better, or maybe a lot better, than the plant on the right. And that's mostly likely because the plant on the left has been exposed to more blue light, which is promotes the growth compared to the one on the right. But I've also noticed now that the both plants are starting to kick in um, bloom, uh, bloom stalks, the plant on the left has actually only one bloom stalk, whereas the one on the right has about three bloom stalks. So the high blue does favor growth, but the 5000K does have um, a little bit more red, and so it does produce a little bit more bloom stalks than the one on the left. Now, why is it that you have to grow the plants under red, blue red light with significantly less lux than you do with plants that are grown in a, a higher or broader uh, spectral range, um, such as fluorescent or, or uh, LED retrofits? The answer to that question is that all the peaks in the spectral analysis contributes to the total lux value. For example, and this 6400K light bulb that's three years old, the total lux value output is 3800 lux, but that 3800 lux is totaled up by the light from the UV, the blue peak, 
the cyan peak here at the arrow, the green peak with the arrow, the yellow orange light, and the red light. And so I know the algebra is intimidating, but each portion of that spectrum can contribute to the overall 3800 lux. And then once you do the math, what it comes down to is that out of the 3800 lux, 633 lux is coming from the blue light and 914 lux is coming from the red light. Now, if you compare this to um, the red blue light, there are only two um, lights in the spectrum, blue and red. And so if you were to do the math from 800 lux, what you see are values of about 516 lux coming from blue and then 283 um, lux coming from red. And so therefore, when you see lux values coming from natural light or plants growing in a greenhouse versus lux values coming from a fluorescent or LED retrofit light, versus a red or blue light, red blue light um, setup, those lux values cannot be translated from one setup to the next unless you do the, do the math to get to the blue and red, red light values. Now this is just a really rough calculation so you can understand that the broader the range of the light, um, the smaller the impact of the blue and red light that it has. So this addresses my next question is, are full spectrum lights necessary for plant growth um, or for African violets to bloom? And the answer is no. You've seen in the last slide uh, that African violets can be grown quite well in these uh, red blue lights. Um, but in the last decade, and this is a big but because in the last decade, plant biologists have seen that plants are able to absorb light in the green range because there are other pigments such as phycourethrins that can absorb green light for photosynthesis. We have discussed LED retrofits as an alternative to fluorescent lights. We have discussed the uh, blue-red lights as an al alternative to, um, to use for uh, growing African violets. Next, we'll discuss LED strips. And what we see is that the quality of these LED strips are quite variable. I purchased two different LED strip lights. The one on the left here is actually uh, what I consider a mood light that allows you to change the color. So you can change it to white, red, blue, whatever color you want to set the mood. And so when I ran the spectral analysis, what I see is that you have very low blue and very low red levels, but you have very high far red infrared light ranges that are close to or about 100%. And so with plants with lights that have such low blue and red values, but very high far red infrared light values, I would say this is a big fat no for me. These lights will basically be just as good as putting your plants in the dark closet. Now the second LED strips, um, this one does not allow you to change color. It only comes in, uh, in, in white. In this case, I used a special analysis and I ran it and I, what I see is that it's very typical of the LED retrofit. So you see a sharp, strong peak of blue light followed by a broad range of green to red peak. And so the lux value is quite low. It's about 400 lux. Um, but what you do for or what I've seen people do with string lights is they put multiple rows of string lights uh, above their plants. But you notice the CCT value here is equivalent to 6,000K. So that's a pretty pretty high high blue there. And so if you are using um, 6,000K uh, LED strip lights, I strongly suggest you add in a row or two or alternate rows between this um, daylight white um, light strips with a warmer white light strip so that your plants get a little bit more red and when, when it needs it. This next LED example is probably the, probably the reason why LED lights have such a bad reputation. So this company advertised online that its light was, uh, was great for growing plants. And they also included a spectral analysis and I was, at first, you know, it looks okay, but if you look closely, you notice that a lot of the values, including the blue peak and the red peak, is above 1.0 or is above 100%. And so that is impossible for any spectra. Um, but being that I was, uh, I was curious, I decided to buy this light anyway and test it out. And I grew a, a couple of my AVs under, underneath this light. And within a week or so, I noticed the petioles kept on elongating. The plant did not... Uh, grow, but the petals just kept on getting longer and longer. And so I decided to run um, uh, my spectral analysis or with my spectrometer, and I saw a completely different spectra. 
with this light setup. Instead of having uh, a, a lot of blue like this company advertised, it actually has a very low blue, but then it has a broad peak from green to red where the peak peaks around 1.0, which is where it should be. But if you, if you were to do the math, the ratio of red to blue is about three red to one blue. And if you remember, three to one red to blue is equivalent to 3000K. And I suggested earlier that you should not uh, grow plants long term with 3000K lights. And so I made a review online and basically said this company, you cannot be lying about your, uh, your spectra. This is actually, you know, false advertising. And so these lights, these sort of lights, the only way for you to determine um, if they're good or not is with the spectrum, spectrometer, unfortunately. Um, perhaps if you have another way to measure the blue to red, uh, red ranges or ratios, then perhaps that would be an option. But it's really difficult for some of these LED lights for you to know if they're good or bad until you put your plants underneath them. This leads us to the diagram again. Uh, we've talked about how natural light provides the best quality of light, but has the lowest consistency. Um, we've also discussed how fluorescent light has or produces decent quality of light and also decent amount of consistency. But where do LEDs fit on this diagram? Now, LED lights, I have to give it to them, they have the best in terms of consistency. LEDs are either consistently good, excellent, or consistently bad. And so what we've seen with the different types of LEDs is that you oftentimes have to just experiment with them. Um, but the, the only exception is the LED retrofit lights or the LED retrofit bulbs. Those lights actually do almost completely overlap with the fluorescent light. So they make an excellent um, substitute. So if you decide to switch to LED retrofit uh, bulbs, actually I would, I would recommend it. Now if you're looking to go into the other types of LED lights and I would say proceed with caution. To summarize today's talk, I do suggest that you diversify your bulb setups. To not grow with just one light unless it is a plant that loves, let's say, 6400K lights. In that case, you can grow them with 6400K. But by diversifying your bulb setups, you're more likely to succeed in growing your plants. Also, if you're growing plants very well for show or you know, you're know you growing plants and they're happy and they're flowering, there's no need to change anything. If you're not comfortable with changing, there's no need to fix or, or fix anything that's not broken. However, if it is broken or you are looking to upgrade or you, you just happen to be more eco-conscious, do your research, um, diversify your bulb setup, have one warm, one, one, one daylight. And if you do purchase or switch to LED lights, make sure you change your day length um, so most people, when they switch from fluorescent lights to LED lights, they'll notice that your, your day length will increase from, or decrease, I'm sorry, from 12 hours or 10 hours down to maybe 7 hours. So the light is on for a, a significantly lesser amount of time. And also, in this example, I'm showing Orchid Trail. So Orchid Trail, I grew for a very long time, for almost two years, and it never flowered for me. Um, it may push that one blossom, like here on the left, a little one you see on, on the left here. But for the most part, it never bloomed for me. So I decided, well, I'm going to add a, a, a 3000K light bulb. And so without even sectioning or partitioning my plant or putting a piece of plastic down the middle, you see the one on the side on the right, which was exposed to 3000K, um, this side flowered so much more than the side on the left. And so the side on the left may have the, le the leaves may be slightly bigger, but the side on the right was actually flowering. So if you have a diversified bulb setup, make sure you rotate your plants frequently or you'll end up with a plant like this where it flowers on one side of the plant and not the other. And finally, pay attention to red light reach and then perform red light therapy when needed. We know that plants will reach for blue light. It's, it's been known for from over 100 years. If you take away blue light, the plants will start to grow taller. But now we're also seeing that if plants are not getting enough red light, they will also start to reach as well in, 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 in trying to find that red light. So perform red light therapy when necessary. So the last uh, few experiments I started doing was transitioning to other Jesnerians to 
see if this phenomenon of the blue, uh, red to blue light ratios affect plant growth. And so the plant on the left is actually Sinindra bulata, and you'll notice that when it's grown under 3000K high red LED lights, the plant is basically very weak. The stem is very weak. It constantly grows and then flops over and then grows again to try to correct itself. But the great thing about this plant is that 3000K it flowers constantly, even though this flowering st or the, the stem itself is very weak. Now, if you look at the plant on the right, that is actually a primulina. So there are a few handful of primulina that grow very well for me with six for six under 6400K lights. But then there is also a few of them that grow very poorly under 6400K. So in this case, this primulina has what I call red light reach. All the leaves are actually reaching straight up. So it's looking for red light. And so what I started to do is uh, grow them under uh, 3000K lights to uh, put them through red light therapy and the leaves are finally starting to, to flatten out. So I'm, I'm continuing on this research with other Gisnerians and I'll probably will discuss this more with the Gisneric Society uh, in a year or so. So look forward to that. And finally, I would like to thank everyone for stopping by. I hope you had a great time um, and learning about some of these uh, experiments of mine um, over the past year and a half. And I hope that this encourages some of you to get out there and also experiment on your plants as well and, and come back and tell us what you found. Because I think a lot of us will be intrigued to learn more about how lights or how any type of uh, plant treatment being fertilized or, or heat or heat stress or um, drought stress, whatever you have it, um, to come back and to report to us what you find in these next set of experiments. I will set up a forum online in one of the Facebook groups for, that, for people to come and ask questions to me directly if they want. Um, otherwise, um, thank you for your time and I hope to meet you uh, or see you at the next convention.